Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to another edition of our M&M's uh, Ministry Moments. We trust that you have been blessed, and, and we're delighted that you have chosen to be with us today to share in a, uh, a snippet from the Word of God. Uh, I want to share th three points with you today, and then I will uh, read a little bit of Scripture uh, as well and uh, try to uh, help us understand some, some uh, truths of the Word of God. The first thought that I want you to understand is that sin is never satisfied. Sin has an insatiable appetite that is never satisfied. Number two, sin, when it is committed, it never meets our expectations. Sin always fails to meet its promises or the expectations of those that indulge in it. And thirdly, Sin will always cost you more than what you will want to pay. Sin is more costly than what you really fully comprehend. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 13, we read a story about King David's sons and his children, his daughters. And I will read beginning of verse number 13 there. Now Absalom, David's son, had a beautiful sister whose name was Tamar. And after a time, Amnon, David's son, loved her. And Amnon was so tormented that he made himself ill because of his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend, and Amnon's friend told Amnon what you need to do is is tell your dad that you are sick and that you need your sister to tend to your uh, medical needs and have her sent to you. David, King David will send her to you and, and she can cook for you and, and uh, then try to nurse you back and then you can take advantage of her in this scenario and, uh, and you can have your sister Tamar. That's what uh, Amnon's friend told him. And so Amnon followed the instruction, the suggestion of his friend, and told his dad that he was not well and asked for his dad to send for him, uh, for him Tamar, that she might come and attend to him. She came on sight, and while he was laying on his bed pretending to be ill, and uh, she made uh, some food for him and, and uh, needed some uh, bread and, and uh then turned around and fed him. But uh, Amnon had a plan. He directed for all other individuals in the room of his servants and whatnot to leave the room and to close the door behind them. And when Amnon was left in the room with Tamar, his sister, he overpowered her, committed uh, an atrocity with her, and of course, um, uh, incest was was uh, fulfilled in that scenario. A a sad pi picture and a very uh, devastating uh, picture for T Tamar, but also one for Amnon. If you read that story, you drop down to around the fifteenth verse of that story. When Amnon, Amnon had finished his deed. Uh, the Bible says, Then Amnon hated her, Ben Tamar, with very great hatred, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Get up and go. Get out of my sight. You see, when Amnon's sinful lust f were allowed to fulfill themselves, they were not satisfying. He did not find what he was expecting in Tamar because had he found what he was expecting in Tamar, he would have wanted to kept her and, and to continue in a relationship with her, but he did not. It's because sin is never satisfied. It, it is not uh, contented. Second of all, uh, Amnon was not uh, was did not uh, find what he was expecting in this incestuous relationship. Sin never meets our expectations, and Amnon did not find what he anticipated in Tamar, his sister. 
It did not meet his expectations. It didn't satisfy him, and it did not meet his expectations, but it did cost him more than what he really thought and, and uh, what he would have, uh, if given the opportunity to, to think, would have chosen to give. For when you drop down to verse number 23 of that story, after two full years, Absalom had sheep shears in Belhor, which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. Suffice it to say, Amnon came also. They had a feast. They, uh, they ate and they drank and were merry. But Absalom told his servants, he said, he said this, Mark when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, strike Amnon, then kill him and do not fear. And it was done even that way. So we find in this story that Amnon committed fornication, ancestral relationship with his sister Tamar. It did not satisfy him. It did not meet his expectations. And it cost him his life. It took two years, but that event cost him his life. When you and I engage in sinful behaviors, we will find in like fashion that it will not satisfy us because the drunkard always needs another drink. The drug addict always needs another drug. The one that uh, commits uh, fornication and, and commits adultery is always looking for another prey. It's never satisfied. Its, it's appetite cannot be quenched. And it is never, uh, uh, it never meets our expectations. Because if it met our expectations, we would be contented. We would say enough already, but it doesn't. It doesn't meet our expectations. Never find the perfect drug. Never find the perfect individual, woman or man. They just do not exist because sin can't be satisfied and it does not meet our expectations. It cannot, never will. But what sin does do it will cost you more than you will be willing to pay in the end. As it did Amnon, it cost him his life. Sin will cost you your life. In the spiritual sense of dying in our, in our, in our sins without God, yes, it could potentially cost that. But even with that to a side, it will destroy your body, destroy your health, and destroy your quality of life and destroy much about you because sin always costs more than what we logically would want to pay. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded, uh, I was reading in the scripture a few days ago and uh, this thought uh, came to me in conjunction uh, with these three points and that is this. There are individuals that in their walk with God uh, are never satisfied in the walk with God. And they come back and say, well, you know, I tried to be a Christian. I tried to serve God. I tried to live for the Lord, but it just didn't meet my expectations. It never satisfied me. The preacher said it was, was what I wanted, but I tried it, but it really didn't. It, it wasn't for me. Well, the truth of the matter is, and here's the fact that unless you give yourself wholeheartedly and completely and entirely to a walk with God, it will not be a satisfying walk. I had a preacher one time uh, come preach me a uh, special service there uh, when I was pastoring in Indiana, and he made this statement. He said, make a box of, uh, of brownies. Choose the finest Betty Crocker brownie that you can find. Mix it up according to the recipe and don't, don't uh, miss a thing. Follow the recipe to the dotting of the I and the crossing of the T. But before you put that mix into the pan and into the oven, go outside and pick up a little yard fudge, is what he called it, and add it to the mix, stir it up, and then let that 
batch of brownies cook and take them out. Here's the point. Nobody wants to eat brownies that have been tainted with yard fudge. And if you were to eat those brownies that have been tainted with yard fudge, they would not be satisfying. They would not meet your expectation. They would be a big disappointment. That's what happens to many people today who try to sit on the fence and serve God and serve sin at the same time. It is a dissatisfying scenario. It is a dis uncomfortable position to be in. You will not be happy in your walk with God doing such. My advice to you today is give your heart entirely and wholly to God, completely. Surrender yourself in your entirety to God. And that's where you will find the satisfaction of a walk with God as God has ordained to be. When you live for God with your whole heart, with 100% of your effort, you'll find that there's no walk in life that can any wise compare with the walk with Jesus Christ. God bless you today. I trust you remain blessed, you and yours. Take this to heart and consider it if you will. And until next time, I...